become free from karma. And at that point, we attain complete freedom, uh, complete peace, no more anxiety, vaikuntha, uh, and, and real happiness, real satisfaction in life with our dear friend Krishna. So that's the process. So if these things come up, uh, then we have to use every tool available to clear the decks. Uh, if, we're, if we're still attached thinking that, oh, if this doesn't work out, then I can always do something else. I can always go back to being like this, like I was before. But why are you here? It's because the way you were before wasn't satisfying. Uh, didn't give you the happiness, didn't give you the peace that you wanted. That's why we're all here. I mean, I had it all together. I was in a really great jazz band. I, was, I had a steady gig. I mean, we were booked for the next five years, literally. Every night, playing in different places, right? I had it made. I was making, you know, double union scale or something like that. I was really in a good situation. But one night, I came down off the stage and I went, this is not doing it for me, you know? And from a material standpoint, everything was fine. But there was something missing and it was something that that this material satisfaction could not address. And what that was, was Krishna. Yeah. That's very clear now. Very, very clear from this point of view. So something is there in you that is doubting this process or that is, is doubting, you know, where you're going to wind up by doing this process. You know, there's, there's something in you that doesn't want to surrender fully. You know, there, there's something, and it has to do with your desire. You know, you can blame the mind and say, oh yeah, the mind is doing this, the mind is doing that, but the mind is only doing that because of your desire. So if the mind is giving you trouble, that means your desire is not pure. You have some desire other than for Krishna. Huh? Might as well face it. That's the reality. So is it you have to make up your mind. Do you really want Krishna? If you really want Krishna, then you have to put these other things away. Huh? I mean, you're still young, you know. At, at my age, if I haven't already attained something in this material world, it's probably not going to happen anyway. So I might as well just give up on it. You know, you're still young. You might have some hope that, oh, you know, if I, if I ever get tired of this devotional service, I can always go off and do X, you know, whatever it is. And so your mind is reflecting that desire by uh, influencing you to hold back and to find so many faults, even if they're not really there. This is the mind, you know. So don't blame your mind. You have to take responsibility for your condition. And that means you have to look at what your desires are. are your, do you really desire, do you really want this devotional service, or is this something else that you want? Uh, don't lie to yourself, and don't just blame the mind, because the mind is doing what you told it to do. Krishna says the mind, the intelligence is higher than the mind. The, uh, the mind is higher than senses, but intelligence is higher than the mind. And false ego is higher than intelligence. And above them all is the soul. And the desiring is the business of the soul. So you, the soul, are desiring, and then all these other things, false ego, mind, intelligence, and senses, are doing whatever you desire. So if you're desiring something apart from Krishna's devotional service, then of course the mind and intelligence are going to follow that. And, and don't ask me, how do you change my, your desire? Huh? <laughs> By desiring to change your desire, right. You know, this, not, this is not a mechanical process. It ultimately comes down to consciousness. And if you know that this is the ultimate process of consciousness, 
then you know if you have uh, substantial integrity you would desire to follow this process to its conclusion seems logical to me huh but of course we're habituated to so many nonsense desires that's our disease you know and even if we stop sometimes the mind will keep going in the same pattern for some length of time so you have to make up your mind that you're going to take up this process and just execute the process until the habit goes away and in the meantime when it does come up you're not going to give it any space uh, beat the mind with a stick in the morning and a shoe at night you know because the mind is like that the mind is full of all kinds of nonsense you, if you believe in the mind you'll be led astray but of course if you want to be led astray then you know go ahead and have a nice conversation with your mind hey what's up mind oh I'm worried about this and I really want that I'm afraid of all these things and then my mommy doesn't like me and ah you know whatever it is the mind is full of it so if we listen to the mind of course we're going to be led astray you know so the question is well, why would you want to listen to your mind what's the motivation what's the desire that would make you listen to your mind when the mind is telling, telling so much nonsense so anyway this is you know, the reason I'm going into this in so much detail is that it's a subject that affects everyone okay any more questions yes there's one more question one more question okay from Prasad in Bhagavad Gita Lord Krishna no sorry it's Bhagavad Gita yes right? there you go Lord Krishna explains <laughs> that four kinds of people approach him those through going through misery etc right when is when people have comfortable material life and have basic faith in God when does the serious Brahma Yajna happen when they get knowledge see the, the first the kind of person is coming out of distress they want relief from their distress the second kind of person is coming because they want uh, money economic development uh, and Vedas give economic development There's plenty of Vedic processes you can do for economics no problem but then the third kind of person who comes to Krishna wants knowledge why is the world like the way it is why is human life you know the way it is and how can I improve my situation how can I improve my consciousness like that so Vedas also answer all these questions and once you get knowledge uh, then you're beyond this problem solving stage and you get to the stage of oh Vasudeva Sarvamiti uh, Krishna is everything so I should worship Krishna because simply that's the right thing to do that's my duty and I should I should follow my duty uh, not that I should uh, simply take this knowledge as theoretical no I should put it into practice in my life it's practical you'll find everything in the Vedas is a practical uh, knowledge uh, it's not just for armchair discussion it's for actually putting into practice in your life and making your life perfect and if you do it you'll find that it always works uh, I mean the Prabhupada always gave the example that the, um, the Vedas say that cow dung is pure and yet cow dung is the stool of an animal so this cow dung uh, being stool it should not be pure uh, but yet if we do the experiment and we actually test the cow dung maybe not on the ground but when it first comes out of the cow it's completely pure the cow has some enzyme that digests all the bacteria and like that 
So if we actually test this Vedic knowledge, we'll always find that it's correct. Uh, so once, once we've passed beyond the, the stages of uh, relief from distress and gaining economic development, then we come to the platform of knowledge. And once we get knowledge, then we want to love Krishna because we know that's the actual solution to all of our problems. Okay, give me the Verdunga, please. No, you, sh you should play the drone. Okay, thank you. What do we got here? Try about G. 